in this episode of XX Files. If the dogs can detect between a healthy sample versus a cancer sample, then we want to look at those samples. Oh yeah, that one's unpleasant. That smells like, I'm gonna put a star, that smells like body odor. <laughs> My name is Kate Priggy and I'm a chemist here at the Monell Chemical Census Center. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the lab of Dr. George Preddy and we study human body odors. It does get a lot of giggles when I tell people what I work on, um, but there actually is a lot of information that odors tell us about human beings, for example. Um, so I wanted to use my chemical background and maybe harness some of the power of odors and, and learn what we can from them. We found that no two individuals smell the same, whether that's looking at your earwax profile, volatile profile, or your body odor profile. So much in the same way you have an individualized fingerprint to identify you, you in fact have an individual odor print. We're interested in seeing if we can get information about what you've eaten contained in your earwax. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna get a before sample of the earwax from our subject. Oh, fun. <laughs> Everyone's earwax is gross. <laughs> Nick's isn't special. And then we're gonna go downstairs and have the subject eat an orange and be exposed to the orange in the atmosphere for about 30 minutes. And then we take an after sample. We're looking to see is there a change or an increase in limonene, the major uh, chemical, volatile chemical found in orange. So we understand we're not going to get a lifetime of human information, but if you can get any type of retention from your environment and what you've been exposed to, there's a lot of applications that we can envision. Once we understand what types of chemicals are produced by the human body, we want to know what happens when things change or when, you're, um, when there's the disease state, for example. And we've segued into studying disease states and what that means on your overall odor profile. We're using a really interesting multidisciplinary approach. So it's been shown that dogs can actually detect cancer. What we're doing is we're trying to use dogs to help us determine what volatile biomarkers are associated with ovarian cancer. My name is Jonathan Ball and I train the medical alert dogs here at the Working Dog Center. I am always amazed by the dogs. And here it's hard to appreciate, you know, how subtle these odor differences are. And we are left with the dogs to kind of tease that out. When the dogs come to us, the first step is just introduce uh, introduction to that odor, that plasma, with the malignant cancer in it, and then pairing it with a food reward. We're shaping that sniff. We'll do that for about a week, and then the next step is introduction to the control, or a normal plasma. Still pairing that with a food reward, and then we move to the wheel. We place both samples in the wheel, and the dog does the same game, but this time on the wheel, very similar to what you saw with Olin. When we have some reliability, the dog is consistently showing interest in the malignant, then we'll start spacing them um, further apart. When the dog clearly gets the game between those two scents, we'll introduce the benign sample control. These experiments are basically running in parallel. So the dogs are being trained right now, and actually if the dogs can detect between a healthy sample versus a cancer sample, then we want to look at those samples and see what are the chemicals that the dogs are triggering to and which ones are characteristic or biomarkers of disease. We're then taking the approach of using, um, we have a collaboration with a physicist at the University of Pennsylvania who can design um, nano devices that are able to specifically detect volatile chemicals. And then we could have a handheld device, for example, that could be used in the clinic one day to diagnose ovarian cancer at a much earlier stage. I'm not sure exactly what the future holds or what I'm going to do next, but I love the research that I'm involved in now. Um, I love the application of it. I would love to be involved in research that really has an impact on human health and, and overall well-being, and whether that's an industry um, or in academia, or if it's teaching a, the future generation of scientists. I'm hoping for great things.
I study a group of scorpions that belong to the genus Centroides, um, commonly known as the bark scorpions, and they make venom that is uh, intensely painful. Some people describe it as uh, the feeling or sensation of being burned with a cigarette or being branded, and that can be followed by a sensation you feel like somebody's hit you with a hammer. Hopefully the weather will hold, weather could will rain, hold. Well, might be beautiful, might got, not rain. We yeah. got, we got over 100, 100 last night. Last night which was not bad. Yeah, it's always a it's a gamble, but